So we've all seen GPT-4 being merged into Bing ever since Microsoft made their $10 billion investment into ChatGPT. And although Microsoft have diverse income streams that even a YouTuber would be impressed by, on the other hand, Google are stuck in the search game. So now that Bing has ChatGPT and Google doesn't, does this spell the end for Google? To maintain this dominant position that Google's had for over a decade now, where, you know, the only reason anyone uses Bing is to search how to get Google Chrome on the new Windows laptop, whereas Google is used for essentially every other search in the world, they're now competing against Bing, which is using ChatGPT. So they're essentially fighting against ChatGPT search engine. I don't know about you, but I now pay for ChatGPT Pro, and every time I have a question that I would normally ask Google, I ask ChatGPT, unless it needs up-to-date information. So what is Google's answer to this? Bard. Now, Bard was kind of initially a flop. It was being consistently reviewed as the kind of rubbish little brother to ChatGPT. This didn't get any better for Google when they released it in February, and the initial ad had fake news You are fake news. Or hallucinations as they call them in generative AI, subsequently making their stock price take a hit. Right, now if fake news wasn't bad enough, at the live demo in Paris, they forgot the phone to do the live demo. So embarrassing, look at this. Let's see how that works with a live demo. Oh. We are missing the, <laughs> we're missing the phone. <laughs> We will have to, we have no, okay, we're gonna move on. We can't find the phone. So with Microsoft taking a dominant position now in the generative AI marketplace, Google's had a lot to answer for. With these failings from Bard, you know, it's just slipping away from them. And so yesterday on May 10th at Google I.O., they released Palm 2. So what is Palm 2? Well, it's an advanced language model, and it's essentially the same type of technology which is behind ChatGPT. The main difference here, though, is that it's claimed to have improved multilingual reasoning and coding capability. For reference, Palm 1 is what was behind Bard. Palm 2 is now what's behind the new Bard, which just came out yesterday. Where Google have an edge here is it's not only behind Bard, because Palm 2 actually comes in a bunch of different sizes and currently powers over 25 Google products. It also has Med Palm 2, which is the medical variant. It's actually the first large language model to perform at expert level on US medical license and exam style questions. So that will probably be used for cheating in the future. It also has SecPAM, which is specialized for cybersecurity analysis, and it even has an API available for developers. I've tried to look and see what actually powers it and you know how the model was trained, blah, blah, blah. I've even looked through the document a little bit. Um, <laughs> I actually got ChatGPT to summarize the document. But they compare Palm 2 to Palm 1, and it's better, which is, you know, all you need to know. But I must admit, from looking at it, the multilingual translation is what stood out to me to impress me most, because Google already have a mode of Translate, right? It's not really a mode now, because loads of people can do it, but whenever you think of Translate, you think Google. Same when you think of Maps, you think Google. And so here now, not only do they have this Translate embedded into it, they also have this, like, interpretation feature, and so really to get this, it's not about beating ChatGPT, it's about having that level playing field. But it does beg the question, is it as good as ChatGPT? 